All right, check this, right? Real quick disclaimer, real quick disclaimer, so I know this video is for you, right? If you're the type of person that willingly drinks root beer, this video is not for you. And I'm talking about, like, we all been out to eat where, like, you ask the waiter, the waiter asks you what you want to drink. You say, like, I want a cherry Coke or a cherry Pepsi, and they make a mistake in your root beer, and you just drink it because it's there. That's cool, but if you're one of the people who, like, willingly, like, actually order root beer, this video is probably not for you. Like, root beer? Come on, beloved. Anyways, listen, let's get started. We got to talk about this academic situation. Um, they can't stand the facts. No. A lot of the insane, they can't stand this rap. I'm so oh. buffalo like I'm bandana black. But from the 716, we determine if we discipline. Oh, that's your man. Better get him for you missing that. Academics and... um. Academics went too far. I'm just going to say academics and Funkmaster Flex went too far. I know you're probably looking at the screen right now. You're probably thinking like he went too far. It's a, it's a picture of Russell Simmons on the screen. He probably went too far. With Russell Simmons. No, Russell Simmons. He did go too far. With Russell Simmons, but I'm not talking about with Russell Simmons. I'm actually talking about with L. Cool J. The reason why I'm not saying with Russell Simmons is because we'll, we will talk about that before we get into that. You know, what? let me um do something that I learned from Joe Button. Let's start with love. You know, shout out to Joe Button and Joe Button Podcast. We're gonna try to we're gonna start with love. I want to send a shout out to uh, I think it's Toon TV. Let me see. Uh, is it Toon TV? Real Toon TV. Shout out to the the people over there at Real Toon TV. Listen, y'all know I don't watch like a sports. I don't be into a lot of different stuff like that too. I watch a bunch of YouTube and cooking videos. And for like the last week, I've been watching nonstop Real Toon TV. Um, I didn't get paid for this. I don't even know. Actually, you know what's crazy? I'm not even subscribed to the channel. Bonk. This is how you know I'm keeping it G. I just subscribed live to the joint. Make sure y'all hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, bong like that. Real tune TV. But anyways, I said it to say this. Um, OG Percy. This is my favorite OG that's out right now. I've been watching this guy like nonstop. This nigga is funny as hell, yo. Y'all gotta follow OG Percy and follow Real Tune TV. I don't know if that's his channel or that's somebody separate. I think that's somebody separate, but either way, shout out to OG Percy, Real Tune TV. Now, let's get back to um academics and um him going too far. And I want to take my time with this because I want to say this. Uh, I want to say this in a, in a way that's very disrespectful to academics. I'm, keep it, I'm trying to be disrespectful to academics, but in a way to where you understand the reason why I'm upset that academics did this. Right. Because it's only it's only it's only happens in the black community. Like niggas be out here. Nigga, you know, I ain't gonna hold you. Niggas be out here. Nigga, academics is out here. Nigga. Right. So the other day, academics decided to make some comments saying that how all of the older people in, in hip hop, like all of our OGs in hip hop, mostly all the people who helped create hip hop that was there years ago are all uh, broke. They don't have a lot. He used words like basically saying that they're dusty and um, whatever. Basically what he was trying to say is that they're broke. They don't have money. They're, they're not like millionaires like these other artists. Now is what academics said um, true on this channel, you know, we got to keep it 100 no matter what. It's not just for views like that. I wouldn't be me if I didn't keep it 100. Is what academics said um, true? What he was trying to say, yes, it, it was true. Um, but was it right? No, it was absolutely fucking wrong. And she'd be punching his shit for it. I'm just, I mean, I don't promote violence, but if somebody just happened to punch him in his shit, I totally would promote and, and, and I'm saying endorse that. Don't do that, by the way. Don't get me sued. Um, but um, the reason why I say he, he, he's right is because it's not based off of money. It's not, it, none, none of this is based off of money. This is what's wrong with niggas like academics. This is the reason why people like academics, people like 6 9 people like WAC 100, and I know y'all gonna say why WAC 100, that's a whole other story. They don't need to be a part of this thing that we call hip hop. They don't need to be anywhere close to what this thing that we call um, hip hop because when you look at a person like academics, right? When he says that about the OGs in hip hop, right? And he's basing that off of money. When you look at an artist like, um, Shout out Philly, Chris and Eve, Chris and Eve from the Young Guns, right? Look at an artist like Chris and Eve from the Young Guns, right? Chris and Eve from the Young Guns probably have less money than, and I'm just keeping it, you probably have less money than, let's say, uh, Quando Rondo. Quando Rondo in 2022 probably has more money than Chris and Eve. Chris and Eve has definitely contributed more to hip hop than Quando Rondo. If you're disagreeing with me on this, like this this video, this channel, life is not for you because Quando Rondo, this nigga quit his gang on live. Like this nigga quit his gang on Instagram. Like he quit his gang on Instagram. But anyways, um, Chris and Neef doesn't probably doesn't have as much money in 2022 as Quando Rondo, but in 2022 they're probably still. I don't know Chris is. I don't know what's going on with Neef. I know Chris is still contributing to more to hip hop than what Quando Rondo is doing um at the at the current moment. So when you have a a bozo person like academics, somebody who I think if you're in a position to like academics where you're getting on like a, a big scale to where like your word actually matters, you should actually one of the requires some one of the requirements should be that you actually should have to come outside. A nigga like academics when his mom basement his whole life with some headphones on playing video games, GTA, talking about real life situations, not realizing that he got it all mixed up. Hip hop was never based off of money. Like, yeah, back in the day, everybody was broke back then. 
everybody was flat broke back then. The niggas was doing it for free. That's how they learned uh, from their mistakes because labels and stuff. We ain't gonna get to taking advantage and stuff of them, but you can't fault them for that because without those OGs, those dusty OGs that you're talking about, there is no academics. There is no band in the black. There is no your favorite artist, Drake. There's definitely no Drake. Ask Drake about it. That's your favorite artist, ask Drake about it. There's no Drake without these uh without these people. The reason why I said that um was he like what what he what he said was it correct yes but was it wrong yes because do y'all see this happening in country music do you see this happening in rock music do you see this happening in edm music you ever seen a nigga in country music saying yo garth brooks is garth brooks country or i don't you ever seen a nigga say yo garth brooks broke where he washed or he ain't got money like uh um blake shelton i know you probably think of who is blake shelton and for those who know who blake shelton is you're probably thinking like how the fuck do band in the black know who blake shelton is though i rock with country music too Blake Shelton is not my top three of country music. But anyways, this only happened in the black community. When you got niggas like academics out here nigging on platforms um, that actually matter, shit like this happens. And the reason why I wanted to talk on it, not just because I'm a DJ also too, but because he, when I, when I watched what he did, he, he disrespected Russell Simmons. I, I, I kind of wanted to stay away from the Russell Simmons uh, situation only because it's, He's in that that that, that kind of corner, that kind of situation with R. Kelly. Only difference is R. Kelly has been found guilty. R. Kelly has been locked up for the things that he's actually uh, done. He's been found guilty for it. And we have proof that R. Kelly done it. With Russell Simmons, no matter what you say, you can say he ran. You can say he abated the law. You can say he did exactly what every other white and other rich other person does when those same type of situations. Not saying it's the same type of situation because he didn't get arrested. That's the reason why they do it. Um, It's to avoid it. It could be that he is guilty and he, you know what I'm saying, went to a different country so he wouldn't be uh, arrested for whatever sexual crimes that he had that academics was talking about. But it also could be that he's a multimillionaire who's actually been through a divorce and already lost damn near half of his uh, state and watched his wife take damn near his whole life state. Not saying his whole life state, but take a lot of his money and a lot of stuff that he has going on. And for those allegations ain't cheap. Even to fight a charge like that, to fight a regular charge ain't cheap. So when you're a multi-millionaire like that, you kind of thinking like, like, damn, I got 50 million in cash. I can risk fighting this with 4 million and losing 40 million and going to jail. Or I can just take half a million and move to another country and be a multi-billionaire because the money's worth more over there. That's neither here nor there, but that's not for academics to, um, to say. And I think the academics so many times has violated in hip hop and we give him so many, not we, because it's not me. It's really y'all that watch and promote him. Um, I'm not saying y'all, not the bandana fans. Y'all know what I'm saying. Um, it, it, we give him so many passes, even back with the whole Chicago thing. Not saying that it was his fault that niggas was killing each other in Chicago and that the whole war in Chirac and shit like that too. Um, was his fault because you can't blame that on a person. Like if the person that picked up that gun and shot the other person, that's the person that's responsible for it. But the idiot sucking nigga that was his mom basement that was, yo, we're going to see what the what the body count is. And the Green Ripper that was making these young people kind of um, get clout off of it and make the situation worse. Yes, academics 100% are responsible for that. And I'm not saying that you guys are saying that. I'm saying that. I feel that way. Same thing with 6 9 that whole 6 9 situation. 6 9 wouldn't have been as big as he is, as quick as he is, or as connected as he is without academics. We give him a pass for that also. That's vice versa, too, because... Six nine wouldn't be where he was at without academics. They both evenly uh, helped each other, but we give him a pass with that. And then one thing that I didn't really realize until now that we gave academics a pass for, and I don't want to talk too long. We're gonna, we're gonna end this kind of quick, but this really bothered me though because he's talking about like legends in the game though, and he's basing it off of money. I can see if he said it was lyrics, but um, one of the things, and I don't want to say this funny. I don't know how to say this like I don't really be doing like the big words and shit like that. So I'm just gonna say this in the most respectful way that I can. I can, but. We forgave academics for cyberbullying Meek Mill. I'm gonna keep it. He was cyberbullying Meek Mill for a long time. He was definitely cyberbullying Meek Mill. Meek Mill was, he didn't know how to play that internet game. He, he was losing. Um, and we gave him a pass. He gave him a pass when he was attacking Meek Mill and he was cyberbullying Meek Mill at a time where Meek Mill needed to, to pay attention to his freedom and his, his situation. And academics knew that he took advantage of it. And we kind of just, and I say me also too, because we didn't really speak up, uh, on, on a situation, but this whole, not even Russell Simmons situation, but LL Cool J, my nigga. Like, how do you? Have, how does anybody have anything bad to say about LL Cool J? Like, how do you, bro? What the? How you got LL Cool J upset? Academics, like, he made Kingdom Come, my nigga. Like, LL Cool J played in Kingdom Come. He played in uh, Anaconda. He played in Too Deep. You ain't no cop, J. Reed. You ain't no cop, J. Reed. This is the guy that you want to upset, academics. Like, I really hope somebody, like. And I don't want to, you know, I'm not a role model. I'm, this is not the channel for the, uh, for the, I'm not a role model. Don't follow. Somebody need to punch academics and shit. I ain't even going to hold it. If I had the opportunity, like say if he was like booked in Buffalo, we was like in passing, I probably wouldn't do nothing. I ain't even going to hold you. He got security and I, I ain't, I ain't going to do nothing. No, nah, I probably will. I probably take my chances. But anyways, um, oh, we didn't talk about Funkmaster Flex. I want to get this off my chest too, because 
Funkmaster Flex used to be my idol, right? You know what? I probably we're gonna have to talk about this on live too. But Funkmaster Flex used to be my idol. I'm gonna go a little bit uh, further into why when when, uh, when we go live later on. But Funkmaster Flex is another DJ. You know what? It's DJ is DJs is losing out here. DJ Academics and DJ Funkmaster Flex got us out here looking crazy. Because besides what I just told you about DJ Academics, DJ Funkmaster Flex, right? This is what this bozo does, right? So Funkmaster Flex career was over. Like he was out of here. Like. He, they gave him the corner of the office and this nigga posted it, right? So he been working at the radio station since 1940 fucking forever. He's the only motherfucker I know, uh, celebrating 50 years doing the same fucking job in the same uh, position. But anyways, the radio station realized that, um, Funkmaster Flex is old as hell and they need to get him the hell up out of here. So what do they do? They do like anybody else. And my bad old timers is the radio, but this is what they do. They give you a corner of the office and tell you that you're going to be the supervisor of assistant programming. Basically is they want to get you out of here and have you program, or have you train a new person that's going to be your replacement or have your replacement ready to get you up out of here, but they don't want you to come, you know what I'm saying, to act up too much. So anyways, this Bozo Funkmaster Flex, um, post, post that, that he got the corner of the office. And that's how I knew for sure he was on his way out of here. Besides the fact that nobody listens to this nigga no more, but what does he do? He offends. I'm not going to say he offends. Conway gave him life. Conway from Buffalo, New York, Conway Machine gave Funkmaster Flex life when he was talking about all of the stuff. I'm not going to get the details about what Funkmaster Flex and stuff was doing on radio and shit like that. And because Funkmaster Flex thought he was just going to squash little old Conway from little old Buffalo, New York, but he didn't realize that everybody fucks with Buffalo, New York. Everybody fucks with Conway. I don't think I'll say Buffalo, New York. Everybody fucks with the Conway, Griselda, uh, Westside, Benny. Um, all that. Shout out to Ricky Hyde, too. I'm, I'm proud of you, bro. Shout out Ricky Hyde. Um... To, with, with those guys, and when Funkmaster Flex did that, and things didn't go the way that he, he he planned, not only was his career already over, he probably was gonna get punched in this shit too. So what does he do? He starts calling out people. He does some sucker shit like academics. So what does he does? He says, "Hey, Jada Kiss, I call you out. I want you to put out some new music. The streets want to hear some new music. Hey, Fabulous, I'm calling you. I want to hear some new music. No, nigga, you're not calling out people. The streets didn't sit, tell you that they want to hear some new music." Your career is over and you're headed out the door. So you want them to put out new music so you could be the person to play it so people can listen to you. We don't need you, bro. Yes, Fabulous, we do want to hear new music. Yes, Jada, because we do want to hear new music. But don't give it to this nigga. Give it to my man DJ Wire down there in Texas. Give it to, to one of these up-and-coming DJs. Give it to one of these DJs who actually is here for the cause. Give it to one of these DJs that's actually here for hip-hop. Funkmaster Flex has shown time. Besides the fact of, and I, like, you know what? Just give me 30 seconds, right? Because I want to, this hurt me with Funkmaster Flex. This is the reason why he's a bozo. Besides the fact of what he said about Aaliyah, he said some disrespectful shit about Aaliyah because he wasn't man enough to just go head to head with, he was scared of Dame Dash, so he said some shit to make Dame Dash mad about Aaliyah. Bozo move. Another bozo move. He talked reckless, crazy about Tupac. Talked crazy about Tupac after he was dead. You and Tupac was alive and in the same, like y'all was, you was popping when Tupac was popping at the same time. Y'all could have touched each other. If you would have said what you were saying back then, Pac would have went in your shit. You know why you didn't say it? Cause he was alive. You know why you saying it now? Cause he's dead. Bozo move. Y'all got to hold that too, New York. I'm not, we not, fuck Master Flex and 6ix9ine. We not taking that as a New York state thing. You know how y'all always separate like upstate, downstate New York, Buffalo, New York, New York City. Not fucks with New York City. My I'm a number one dipset fan, but 6ix9ine and fuck Master Flex, New York City. Everybody else, New York State. We a hold that. Um, so, b b besides besides um, the, the, the Tupac thing and the Aaliyah thing, um, Funkmaster Flex is one of the reasons why hip hop didn't really grow. Why a lot of those up and coming artists, or why a lot of those like say, I'm not saying like Dave East in general, but those Dave East type artists who didn't get the shots on radio play in New York City, even though they got it in Buffalo, New York. You know why? Because you had a. I hate when people call me the Buffalo Funkmaster Flex. It was cool before before he did the, the bozo shit, but the same thing you was doing out there, I was doing for real out here. Um, but besides the fact of that, uh, Funkmaster Flex, it's just, you know, this Funkmaster Flex just, shit just make me hot because he didn't have to, you ever, it's like, it's like winning a race, right? You know, it's like, it's like, I don't know, it's like winning a championship, right? And then going to fight the person again and then getting knocked out. Like, Funkmaster Flex is already a legend. He was already, like, solidified, like, in history and just do this bozo shit. It's like, DJs is out here losing right now. I ain't even gonna hold you. Like, between DJ Academics and DJ Funkmaster Flex, like, just call me Bandana. I might be dropping it. If, if Quando Rondo can quit the Crips on Instagram, I can quit the DJ on YouTube, right? So drop the DJ for my name. Just call me Bandana Black until somebody go in academic's mouth or somebody. Funk Master Flex, nothing's going to happen to him because I don't know, like, even with the whole, besides the fact that you and Tupac was alive at the same time, do y'all remember when, <laughs> remember when Funk Master Flex got beside himself and he was like, yeah, they let Alpo live. He was a rat. And then after it, he realized that you got to come outside. And even though Alpo was a rat, he was a killer rat. And you kind of like backed off of that. 
Bro, Funkmaster Flex is a bozo. Anyways, I'm about to get up out of here. Remember, life is what you make it. Always remember, it's called Pop, Not Soda. It's DJ Bandana Black, Mr. I Am Buffalo. Check me out tonight. 716, we will be going live tonight, but you can only, this is the only way you can check me out live tonight at 716. Is if you can check me out for free, twitch.tv slash DJ Bandana Black. Links will be below. Twitch.tv slash DJ Bandana Black. And you can watch it for free. Or you can become a member on YouTube. So if you watch this on YouTube, click below, become a member. Um, but if you want to do it for free, I like free shit. So go to twitch.tv slash DJ Band in the Black. And we will be live around 7, 16 p.m. Um, but you know how I go sometimes. It might be 7, 16. It might be midnight. But I'll be live sometime again um, before the end of the world. It's DJ Band in the Black, we out. DJ Bandana Black and Doris Records. Yeah, man. Bandana Black, you know, he always played local music, you know, for Buffalo, man. We That was the only DJ we really had, you know what I'm saying? And um, he always showed love, man. He always been a fan, you know, since day one. I knew him before. I, I knew him before he was even Bandana Black, you know what I'm saying? So it was just like, when he when he became you know on the radio, uh, a radio DJ man, he just always showed love, man. So, you know, definitely shout out to Bandana Black. Yeah, what Eve? Will you Bandana Black? DJ Ban Ban Bandana.